European finals in France next June. And he knows without doubt this England side of his really have a tough task on their hands. There's no doubt the Danes are an immensely talented side. Robson himself claims that they are in the top four in Europe. In fact, I spoke to a leading continental critic the other day and quoted that to him and he said, I'd like you to name me the other three. He reckons, and a lot of people in Europe reckon, that the Danes are just about the best thing in Europe at the moment. They certainly had an impressive 3-1 victory against France just a fortnight ago in Copenhagen. And at the moment, the presentations, and our guest of honour tonight is Dr Robert Runcie, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Who in fact, is a lifelong football fan himself. Born in Liverpool and, indeed, always a Liverpool supporter and would have no trouble at all in conversing with the Danes. I think just about all of them speak very good English indeed. Jesper Olsen there, and Soren Lerbu. And the captain, Morten Olsen. So a lifelong Liverpool fan. Uh, I wonder whether the Archbishop will have a special word with Phil Neal and uh, Sammy Lee. And he's having a word with Peter Shelton and John Gregory of Queen's Park Rangers. What a big night for him. Trevor Francis there, Sammy Lee full of smiles, and Phil Neal. England, remember, just one point ahead in Group 3 of the Danes, but the Danes have that one game in hand. England, as Steve mentioned, have a marvellous goal difference, helped by a 9-0 victory here against Luxembourg. The referee comes from Belgium tonight, Alex Pony and uh, his two Belgian linesmen. And you'll notice they'll both be waving at yellow flags, not a red and a yellow as usual. The referee was a little bit worried about the Danes wearing red shirts and uh, a red flag getting a bit mixed up with it. So the formalities are over. And now we have the national anthems. the North Sea to be here tonight and are in very good voice indeed. and enjoy some really excellent football here tonight in a game which both sides will be desperate to win seeking qualification for those finals in France next summer and the Danes come here having won four on the trot and this is the England side they face a first Wembley appearance for his country for John Barnes 19 years old and for John Gregory Ray Wilkins the captain his first game for England incidentally since last October he's missed 10 games Russell Osman and Terry Butcher, the Ipswich teammates, 
with clearly a big job to do in defence tonight against a very talented and uh, dangerous Danish attack. The Danes will they've drawn players from Holland, Germany, Italy and Belgium and they say it's probably their strongest ever side. Watch out for tiny Jesper Olsen, the number eight, who got a brilliant last-minute equaliser for Denmark against England in Copenhagen last year. Watch out, too, for the 19-year-old wonder boy, Michael Laudrup, wearing number 10, who scored twice against France a fortnight ago. Alan Seamanson, of course, well-known to Charlton Athletic fans. He played here last season before going back to join his hometown club in Denmark, Weiler. Well, John Barnes has certainly impressed Bobby Robson when he's seen him uh, playing for Watford this season and believes he could develop into one of the greatest and most exciting prospects the English game has seen for many years. A very level-headed fellow, as indeed is John Gregory, 29 years old, now really getting into the big time, and having played really well for Queen's Park Rangers in midfield. And they'll be looking for him to get forward also to add power to our attack up front. Talking about power up front, do watch out for Jesper Olsen of Ajax of Holland, a really exceptional player. They've been linking him with the likes of Johan Cruyff, which may be a bit extravagant as yet. But Jesper Olsen is clearly a man who could cause trouble for England tonight. Well, we know all about this fellow, Alan Siemenson. Those strange months that he led at Charlton in the second division, but he's gone back to Denmark. And I saw him a fortnight ago in Copenhagen. He still has a tremendous influence on the whole Danish side. are prepared, the officials. It's a very blustery night, and we've had a lot of rain here in North London throughout the afternoon. Mercifully, it cleared up about a couple of hours ago. The pitch will be heavy, it'll cut up a bit, but it should also promote some good skillful football. The Danes have never beaten England. We've met them eight times, we've won on six occasions, and we've drawn twice. And tonight is not the sort of night that we want that sort of run to finish. It'll be England uh, who will kick off. in white shirts, the Danes in red shirts and white shorts. Terry Butcher alongside Russell Osman. In fact, it's the same five defenders who played for England in Copenhagen a year ago, which finished in a 2-2, when both England goals that night were scored by Trevor Francis. Butcher. And Francis now in possession for England. Well, we've built up the Danes, I've no doubt that Sepp Piontek, the Danish manager, has been building up the English side and people, and particularly players of the calibre of Trevor Francis. John Barnes losing out a little bit there, is controlling him down. Here's Siemensen with a long ball through. Laudrup's on his way. It could be a sensational start for the Danes. And he missed it badly. 19 years old, and he missed a glorious chance in the first 45 seconds of the game. The wonder boy is human after all, and England can breathe again. A superlative ball through by Siemenson, and Laudrup on his way. Brian Clough, what a miss. It was. He'd gone clear, and he'd held Shilton, and he just failed to put it in. But I've never seen a 19-year-old wonder boy in my life. Journalistic licence, maybe. Well, Francis. Stopped there by Morton Olsen. Both sets of players wearing black armbands tonight. A mark of respect for the memory of Dr. Artemio Franchi, the president of UEFA, who was killed in a car crash last month. Well, the pace of England's defence was tested. Osman was equal to it then. And maybe the black armbands also should signify uh, affection and a memory of a former FA secretary, Sir Dennis Follows, who died last weekend. An old friend. Sammy Lee, then, with the throw for England. 
Phil Neal. Russell Osman. England collecting themselves after that heart-fluttering moment. My word, if we'd gone a goal down in the first 45 seconds of the game, that would have taken maybe a bit of pulling back against the side that would really have had his tails up. They are an excellent attacking side, as I've said. If they, uh, it's a suspect at all, it is in defence. And in a nutshell, you get the feeling that if our defence is at its best and can hold them, there might always be chances of a goal or two at the Danish end. Here you come again, though, as the ball comes through to Jesper Olsen from Bergren. So Jesper Olsen. Trying again to get it inside Phil Neal. Wilkins. Lee. Hit to Mariner. Held up nicely for Francis to show his pace now. Nielsen is after him. Can Francis whip it in? He can. It's a very deep one. And it'll go away for Siemenson to collect. Back to the goalkeeper. Quickly releasing it to uh, skipper Morton Olsen. And now to Soren Merbiu. Olsen forward again. Yes, but Olsen after it. Terry Butcher with him and slipping. And Olsen in. More trouble possibly. Oh, that time a missed kick. Bergman, the man who miskicked, and the Danes might yet come to rue the chances that have gone begging in the opening four minutes of the game. Barnes now for Wilkins, his captain. John Barnes. He's not short of pace, but he wouldn't get past the Danes there. The number seven, Bertelsen. Sanson with the throw for England. Francis. Trying to come away from Nielsen, who'll probably do a marking job on him. Barnes getting it in towards Mariner. And two men are down and injured. A good cross he whipped in there, Brian. It was a brilliant cross from a very, very tight situation. The game set off at a heck of a pace. And the Danes are full of themselves. He's in the corner flag, actually, out of picture. A brilliant cross and a brave header. I'm not sure if there's anything the matter with him, and I don't think that England should be sending two or three people on to look at the first England player that goes down. Well, Fred Street is there. The Danes have a couple around there. Morton Olsen. And both are OK. And it's a goal kick. Having seen them a fortnight ago, the French once or twice caught them out with that sort of cross, and Bobby Robson was there that night as well, so Barnes' ability to cross might be important, and certainly you won't want Sammy Lee to get caught too often like that. But he fought back, Wilkins to Neil, and now to Russell Osman, Wilkins again, Butcher, and Wilkins has made a good break. Barnes, and he's got past his man. Gone past Rasmussen, he's got another cross in towards Mariner. Wilkins. There's Busk who got it away. And an offside against Francis. In fact, it was Sammy Lee who hadn't got back quickly enough. And a free kick to the Danes. They have no conception how to defend against people who go wide, you know, very, very brave. And Trevor Francis has already gone down the, down the right flank, and Barnes is now going down the left. I think Sammy Lee later on in the game will possibly get a few crosses in. They don't like it when it's wide. But they do like it coming forward. And here's Morton Olsen, the oldest man on their side at 34. To Jesper Olsen, no relation. And a free kick. Foul by Phil Neal. So in fact, got a yellow card in the game in Copenhagen. And can't afford another one tonight. Bertelsen. Played wide for Rasmussen, the fullback. Played in quickly. They allowed him to get to it as well. And it 
Bergman not getting that away very effectively. Bergman again, played back to Bertelsen. Now to Lerby, who has a beautiful left foot. Nardrup getting it back, still ruining that miss of his in the first minute of the game, no doubt. Bertelsen played in again once more towards Bergman. But here's Sammy Lee for England to Paul Mariner. Heel there to Neil, Lee, Wilkins, Neil, lead in for Francis, Gregory, hasn't seen a lot of the play so far, there's Lee persuading Mariner to go wide again, but put a little too firmly, it'll be a goal kick. Well, we shall look for Lee to make those runs down the right flank, but... Brian Clough was talking about, maybe a little later in the game when we've sorted out just what power they have in midfield and coming forward. Morton Olsen. Number five, Solomon Busk. Busk. Siemensen. And away they go with Jesper Olsen. Lardrup trying to get it back. Well read by Wilkins. Not only that, he finds Sammy Lee. Mariner trying to come off his man. Neil. Played again for Osman. Wilk uh, rather, uh, Francis with a nice little touch, but the ball didn't... Yes, he's got it back from Mariner. A slight deflection on the way, and Lerby's... Challenge gives England the throw. And they're waiting for John Gregory to come across, presumably to throw a long one into the Danish penalty area. Gregory with the throw. Nielsen not really getting it away. Francis looking to explode. And a free kick there given to the Danes for the foul by Trevor Francis on Soren Morgan. That, that's some good decision from the referee. That was a brilliant decision. Well, there we now. Ivan Nielsen. Yes for Olsen. Bertelsen. Tough little midfield player, but like all the Danes, he loves to come forward and with the slightest hint he'll be there. Well, it's another free kick to the Danes. And a little closer to the penalty area, they'll call real problems with their free kicks, but the likes of Lea Boos got it. This marvellous left footed is now finding Siemensen. Will it be another free kick? It is. Well, I'm hoping they don't give away too many free kicks in and around that penalty area because the Danes are absolutely lethal. Well, Lebu and Siemensen, they practiced a lot of curling free kicks past the wall here in training yesterday. And Lebu, with this left foot of his, referee insisting that the wall is right back well that was a curler but it was away off the target giving away a few free kicks Brian yeah we don't we don't want to give free kicks away obviously but when you're giving them away 10 yards outside the box it's not too much of a problem that uh, free kick of Lerby's was a disgrace but now Mariner free kick Sanson with it, and Francis fractionally offside. Busk. Morton Olsen. Took a slight bottle there, but it's worked well for him. And a free kick that time, there was a push 
by Bergwin on Neil. Arana winning that one. Now, can Neil get to this one? Lee can't get to that, though. as indeed is the number four on the ball at the mall, Morten Olsen, who plays for Anderlecht. And also Bertelsen, who played that ball, is another Belgian import, plays for Sarang. Jesper Olsen, Bertelsen, Rasmussen, Jesper Olsen again, Wilkins getting to grips with him, Another free kick. It must have been out probably for handball by Sanson, I would imagine. Well, Bertelsen now in possession for the Danes, making a break towards that English penalty area. It's Siemensen again, though, picking out Jesper Olsen, played in quickly, but too quickly. Early overall impressions, Brian? The Danes are playing as though it's a home match, which is not too bad a thing as long as we survive. If we can survive, we'll be fine. to Neil. Now Francis again. Ball just kept in. Nielsen is with him. He's obviously doing a marking job. What a, well, I thought for a moment that was a brilliant cross. It seemed impossible to get that over, but Francis did. But sadly for him and for England, he had gone fractionally out, but he looks keen and eager and very sharp tonight. I watched him when they were kicking in, actually, and he looked calm, relaxed and full of himself. I would have thought against the Danes, it was like a picnic in preference to playing in the Italian league. So here's Morton Olsen again, to the big Nielsen, who will spend a lot of the evening, I've no doubt, marking Cello Francis. Francis tried to get to Nerbu there. Mariner did get into that situation, and now Francis again, a little touch for Mariner, a touch out here for Gregory. Francis. A ricochet there, off Bergwin to Sanson. Ball now gone, and the ball fractionally out of play. It's a throw to Denmark. some reason for Bertelsen, I think it is, to uh, tie a lace up. Why he should do that, I can't imagine. Morton Olsen. Osman. Osman again. Francis. Again, Nielsen was right to him, marking him closely, but trying to persuade Barnes to get down that flank, but the flag is up. it seemed to me, but yes, a free kick has been given. Wilkins will take it. Barnes is coming towards the near side. Butcher's gone up on the far side, and I think Butcher's height in that penalty area might be quite devastating. Now, 
they brought Barnes over to take the free kick floated in there Wilkins with it and Simonson got it away and an offside flag against John Barnes to think that he was doubtful even yesterday he had a thigh injury playing in the Belgian league on Sunday but he's 34 years old he's full of vim and vigor it seems and is doing a lot of movement forward for Denmark tonight in the meantime another case of running repairs Sammy Lee with boot problem Quite a good big crowd here tonight for a really critical game. Brian, the referee's been over generous with uh, footballers, well, you know, tying it. boots and all that type of thing. But honestly, I must make the point: this is live football, and this is what happens in 90 minutes. But, I mean, the thing is, there doesn't seem to be any point. Why, why should he do this? He did this to the Danes just now. Why hold up the game when a fella's shoelace comes undone, for heaven's sake? Well, 90 minutes is a long time. This is what happens. Well, let's hope there's other good things in this 90 minutes, which I'm sure they're going to be. Russell Osman, who really has something to prove. He played fairly disappointingly. I think he'll admit in Copenhagen a year ago was conceded a penalty, in fact, Osman. And was beaten by Jesper Olsen for the... Last minute equaliser for the Danes. But he's back there. He's alongside Terry Butcher at the heart of the offence. And we're hoping to do a good job tonight, just as Morton Olsen is doing at the moment for Denmark. Well, fair enough. Wilkins. Francis to Barnes. You can see him get down that line, but stuck on that occasion by Rasmussen Berdrin Rasmussen Wilkins and Morton Olsen again there now Alan Siemensen Berthelsen Siemensen continuing the run finding Jesper Olsen though Phil Neal he found instead a little header there and a flick header by Francis cut out that time by Soren Busk Rasmussen Erfelsen. Haven't quite seen yet, apart from that opening 45 seconds, the action in the penalty areas that we'd anticipated. But it's building all the time, and here's Ivan Nielsen for Denmark. Now well, Leerbu losing control there, that doesn't happen very often. And Lee has found Francis, and he's got... Wilkins outside him, but Francis showing a lot of pace. The back heel front, or Wilkins getting one in, but I thought for a moment we are going to get a repeat of the cup final win from that sort of angle. He curled one into the far side of the goal. It didn't happen. Brian? The anxiety you were talking to me about before the match started and the possible apprehension of the England team manager was typified then when Wilkins crossed the ball. We had eight players behind the ball. I think it's getting, uh, it, it's got through to them, but 90 minutes is a long time. Well, Lerbu now for Denmark. And an offside by Bergren. If you can just forgive me just one more second, we've got to get a couple of more white shirts forward. I think he is very apprehensive about the quality of the Danish attack line and doesn't want to concede anything this early in the game. Lee. Nielsen got that one away. Lee might get another chance. And he's found his Liverpool teammate, Phil Neal. Mariner. Good challenge by Sammy Lee. Wilkins, the little touch. Wasn't a very accurate one. It's sending England back again. Osman. 
Francis. There's a ball now for Gregory. Mariner. Played him again for Walkins. Played again towards Gregory. Now for Neal. And an offside against Walkins. And a free kick. If we get a chance again to see John Gregory play that ball, I think he played it just a wee bit too early. I think for his club, he would have just hung on to it and possibly taken somebody on. The worst thing people can do when they have debuts like this, if it is his debut in international football, is to believe they are an international footballer. They're in this side because they are good club players and they, they have to play exactly the same way as they play on a Saturday. Well, Gregory... Last season, I think I'm right in saying, he was joint top scorer for QPR. He's, he likes to get forward in amongst the goals into forward positions. But here's Battleson now as the Danes come forward again. Well, England were arms aloft claiming something there, but neither linesman nor referee took any notice. It's a throw to Denmark, which Oli Rasmussen he plays his football in Germany for Hertha Berlin. Now takes the throw for him. Yes, but Olsen is close at hand for him. Barnes watching him. Here's Bergren. Sanson. Too far for Francis, but now Francis gets possession from Barnes. Yes, but Olsen. Francis tackling back. And in the end, the foul on Francis goes in with a free kick. We've got to defend well tonight, but it's also worth pointing out that in eight of the last ten games, England have had a clean sheet. And a few goalkeepers better in the world than Peter Shilton. Francis. Gregory. And that time the foul by Nielsen. It's a free kick for England. Wilkins. Phil Neal. Now Sammy Lee. Gregory might collect, no, because Laudrup's on his way again for Denmark. But Bergen outside him, and he held it up too long. Gregory again for England. Francis not reaching Mariner, but Mariner made something of it, or at least attempted to make something of it. It looked as though it was going to be a nasty challenge there by Gregory. In the end, I don't think it was, but the referee felt the intent was there, presumably, and has given Denmark a free kick. Morton Nelson with the free kick. Lee just checking it. And finds Osman almost casually getting it to Phil Neal and just as casually back to Peter Shelton. Still nil-nil if you've just come in, 25 and it's gone. England nil, Denmark nil. Olsen to Laudrup, challenged and beaten by Russell Osman. Here's Gregory, now Lee. A long ball forward, but fairly aimless one it seems. Rasmussen could have just allowed to go into for a Danish throw. Rusk. Quite a bit of experience in this Danish defence. Rasmussen's 30. Olsen, Morton Olsen's 34. Rusk is 30. And here's Begren coming forward. Stopped well by Terry Butcher. He's really won himself a place in this England side now. He's played in 11 of the 12 matches in which Bobby Robson has been manager.
Rasmussen again with the throw for Denmark. Might come for Siemensen, might still come for Siemensen. Lee getting it away, but not very far. Lebu. Finding Jesper Olsen. It's England's throw. Substitutes there on the bunch. The England substitutes tonight, Ray Clements, Gary Mabbott, Luther Blissett, Graham Roberts and Mark Chamberlain. Now oh, Francis whipping the ball in again for Mariner, who thought about leaving it for Gregory, who was coming up fast behind. Francis again. Free kick to England. Looked a little generous, I thought, but they're not going to look gift horses in the mouth tonight. Good situation for England, but a good position to take a free kick. And Butcher come up from the back again. Mariner in there too. And the big men might make it count. Wilkins playing it in. Gregory going in. The keeper flapped. Lee turns it back again. They're all going into it once more, and in the end. It was Gregory, in fact, who got ahead to it. But Ole Kerr, the goalkeeper, is a bit of a flapper. And Morton Olsen, a strong man in the Danish defence, is the man who's injured. Well, again, we had an example of the cross in causing him a certain amount of concern, Brian. It was a good cross, and it was in a very dangerous position. And defenders who were not used to defending in, you know, the way we defend in our English first division have great problems with it. But still, nil-nil with half an hour gone. Ooh, what a bad kick. done butcher still no real pattern about it yet and the nerves seem to be lingering a little longer than usual well it, it there is a pattern in a sense there's not a pure footballing pattern but the Danes obviously have come as I've said full of themselves they're playing it beautifully, first-time football, man-to-man. -man. Not caused us any trouble at all yet. Well, here's Rasmussen, who will be seeking to remedy that, no doubt. We've got a corner. Yes. Shilton hasn't been called on to keep goal yet, and uh, their goalkeeper hasn't been called on to keep goal very much either. I would, I would just make one slight adjustment. I would tell Trevor Francis to move up 15 yards. I feel he's playing too deep and he's wasting his talents. 31 minutes, first corner of the game towards Bergwin, a back heel there. Brusk trying to get in, Siemensen turning it in, but without power and without direction. Now Phil Neal. Sammy Lee. Jefferson. Run here by Siemensen and a good challenge by Butcher. Barry. Wilkins. Chip on Mariner. Out against Soren Busk. England's free kick. has gone forward, but it's now found Francis. Away comes Jesper Olsen. That was a poor ball, and also it wasn't very quick. 
terms of Francis and Mariner getting back into an onside position. So it's a free kick now to the Danes. have three games left, away to Hungary, away to Greece, and at home to Luxembourg. Morten Olsen, finding Rasmussen, Nautrup, and uh, out of sorts at the moment, Sanson finding Francis with a good little pass, and, well, Gregory putting Neil under a certain amount of pressure. are treating it almost like a home game and at times it sounds like a home game for the Danes as well. Busk again, just playing it around gently. Siemensen now looking to quicken things up. Nielsen, big defender who in fact does occasionally burst on the scene and around the opposing penalty area. Shilton in possession. Russell Osman. Forward for Wilkins. Sanson. Good space for Sanson to make some progress forward, perhaps. Mariner. He is right in there, but backing the inches, although against Siemensen, I suppose he always had a chance. Now it's Solon Lerbu playing now for Bayern Munich. It's extraordinary, it's gone along the English back four and now along the Danish back four and a great attacking spectacle that we expected and many people prophesied but we're not quite getting at the moment. It's our job to get the ball. And let's see if we can get it. It's Nielsen in possession now for the Danes. There's a lot of movement up front. It's Morten Olsen now for Denmark. Jesper Olsen finding Soren Busk. Jesper Olsen again. And Simonson. And they claim hand ball. And a penalty has been given. A penalty to Denmark for a hand ball there. We got it, but we didn't get it legally. That's where they claim the handball by Phil Neal there. The second strike. Well, Siemensen often takes the penalties for Denmark. And Siemensen is the man who has got the job now. Well, there's a great chance for Denmark. But he's still got to beat Peter Shilton. Siemensen, all the experience through München Gladbach and Barcelona and Denmark and the responsibility now and it's 1-0 for Denmark So Denmark go into a lead 
lead with 37 minutes gone. And a penalty, a handball by Phil Neal. And the scorer, Alan Siemenson. Now, Mariner to Barnes. Well, it's a blow that England could certainly have done without. Butcher's gone forward again. Sanson waiting to take this throw. Butcher trying one of those back flicks of his. And uh, the referee spotted a foul. It's another free kick to Denmark. Would you have a view of the penalty, Brian? My view of the penalty. I think it was a penalty, obviously. I watched the Danish players that couldn't bear to see or to even look if it was going in the net. It's a hell of an advantage for them now. Yes, for Olsen, too far forward for Siemensen and Kenny Sanson for England. Forward to Wilkins, who's really got to do an inspirational job in the midfield for his team now. Off a Dane for an English throw, with about six minutes to go to half-time. Lerbu, Bertelsen, it's really going to lift Denmark. And a side with that amount of talent, when they've got the confidence to go with it, they're going to take an awful lot of stopping. It's with Soren Brusk, back to the keeper. Ole Kerr. Yes, but Olsen jumping for this one. Easily beaten, though, by Butcher. Chested there by Mariner for lead a chase. Get up, Savvy, and on your way. Now, Lerbu. Erdogan showing too much of it to Lee, who is in with a challenge. Now Wilkins, it's all a bit frantic there. That's a free kick to England, a foul by Lerbu. Five minutes to go in this first half. John Barnes for England on the far side. The cross coming in towards Trevor Francis. And now Sammy Lee, dinking it back again towards Francis, tried to get the header in, in fact it deflected off again. But the keeper saved the corner. And here's Laudrup. He's got Jesper Olsen up with him and Barnes coming back well to tackle back for England. Brian, the first time we see literally seconds of typical English first division and not being rude towards our first division, I think it's the best in the world, we start to lock a team. Neil. Lee. Mariner. Gregory, but Lerbu. When you say you see the first glimpse of it, Brian, what is that? Well, I've seen challenging for, for a ball that's on the floor, several good tackles, white shirts moving forward. If we're going to score a goal, you've got to get white shirts in their box. There's no doubt about it. The, the thing now where we're a little bit apprehensive is gone now. We won nil down. We've got to score two. Back by Butcher. Butcher and Osman haven't broken sweat yet. We won nil down. We might as well move up 15 yards and let him earn the corn. It's an England throw. Hey there, and the Danes get it away again to Siemenson. And from Norway, there's good news for Wales. These Wales, they've drawn nil-nil, we gather, in Norway, which keeps them with a two-point advantage in their group. They certainly, because though they might be on their way to France next summer. Suddenly, though, there's a problem for England. One goal down here to Alan Siemensen's penalty after Phil Neal had handled. 
Butcher hitting the ball straight at Simonson. Here come the Danes again. Jesper Olsen. Laudrup in the middle and Berggren in the middle. And he gave it away to Barnes. And surely is a free kick, is it? Wishful thinking, maybe. No, it's a kick, and it's taken. It's with Wilkins. And now Francis. Gregory. Edged on there to Mariner. And Lerbu there, having it get onto the left foot again. With a chance now of getting it away to Berger. Two minutes to go to half time. And Kenny Sanson. Mariner chested down, but not accurately enough for Wilkins. And here at Denmark again. Berthelsen. Berglund has got Laudrup away on his left. He's got Siemenson on his right. But here's Sanson now collecting for England. Wilkins. He got Barnes on his way. Rasmussen is buckling back there and saved the corner. But it's England's throw. And they'll look for a long throw into the Danish box from Kenny Sanson, with Denmark leading by a goal to nil. Again, which is there. Looking for a back flick, maybe. Sanson's header. Which is back flick, Mariner getting in there. France is in there too, a little flick by him into the six-yard area, but the keeper pounced on it. That's where he's a player. Is getting in there again once more for the back flip, which with his six foot four inch frame that's almost irresistible. Although Nielsen, the big man in the Danish defense, is with him, still got it back there. But although Gregory got his shot in, the whistle had gone for a foul by Butcher on Nielsen and a free kick to Denmark. Seconds of the first half, Brian. A summing up of the first half. Oh, well. <laughs> Blow me. Summing up of the first half. We're 1 0 down at home. It'll be done at 10 minutes at half time. I would like to see young Mabaton. Well, that's something we shall have to wait and see in the second half whether young Mabbott does come on. What we do know is that England are trailing here by a penalty goal from Alan Siemenson, the number nine for Denmark in this crucial European Championship game. And, uh, you're looking at us one down. Uh, can you put your finger on it? Is there, what is there lacking in the side at the moment? Well, obviously, we're lacking a wee bit of craft. Uh, craft is explained by people who can do the jobs that they're paid to do, and we're, looking, we're lacking this in certain areas of the field. Definitely in midfield. We can't afford to lay back and now defend as we're defending away from home. We've got to get forward and have a little bit more precision and a little bit more skill and match the Danes at their job. I'll be interested to see if he's made any substitutions. Well, I'm casting my eye around them and it looks as though he hasn't. Well, it's not too bad a thing. Possibly he said, get on with it, or, you know, we'll go from there. Although I fancy the Danes have. It looks to me as though uh, Elk 
care of one of the Bucks strikers who was injured yesterday. Is he there on the far side? Brian, I just happen to think we'll win. Well, let's hope you're right. And in 45 minutes' time, we shall know. Wallace. It's Denmark then in the red shirts, attacking the goal to our right. And I'm pretty sure that Trevor Elker has come on. And the feeling is that it's Loudrop who's gone off. The 19-year-old who missed that glaring chance in the opening minute of the game. Well, here's the substitute on now. A very, very dangerous striking player. And he's won a corner for Denmark in the opening minute of the second half. Another player who plays in Belgium. He plays for Lockeren. So, it's Jesper Olsen with the corner for Denmark in the opening minute of this second half, with the Danes leading by 1-0, Osman getting it away, not very far, Bertelsen, Busk playing it in again, and Bergren trying to get it wide, again for Elker. And the play stopped just for a moment, a couple of spectators were on the field, we don't really need to see them. Well, we are going to see them, but... That's their moment of glory, which they certainly don't deserve. And the game stops for a moment. Wilkins. Now just to Sanson. Siemensen for Denmark. And Orton Olsen coming up there, but Sanson matched him there with a the challenge. And the pass that he hopes will send Francis on his way now. Six or one half dozen. Oh, well, that's amazing. The free kick's been given to Denmark. Apparently a foul by Trevor Francis, number 10, on Ivan Nielsen, the Danish number three. saw England pushing down the flanks with Barnes in particular but we haven't seen an awful lot of that since Nielsen getting a header in Gregory and it almost fell for Francis and he was just on side as well See, I'm probably one of the world's great pessimists, Brian, but I'm sure a lot of people sitting at home watching this now saying, I can't see at the moment where England are going to get this equaliser. Well, a, a faction more skill from John Gregory then we would have had one, or at least the chance of one. Well, here's Sammy Lee. And now Trevor Francis. No, it's a goal kick. Francis thought it was a corner. Ollie Kerr, 29 years old, with the goal kick. Part-time player, runs a sports store in Eschberg. Now Wilkins comes now for Lee. Now a few more white shirts getting forward for England. But the red shirts are getting back for Denmark. And Ill Kerr taking possession, and now Lerbu. Here come Denmark again with Bertelsen. Where is this man, Morton Olsen? I can't really call him a defender. He's springing forward at every opportunity. He's very composed at the moment, the Danes, and that's fairly ominous. Inconfident, spraying the ball around inaccurately there because it comes to Gregory, and now for Osman. 
Wilkins back there, hurrying and scurrying around to try and set something up this time from deep. Forward ball this time for Francis, getting away from his marker that time, but well, getting a second go at it. And now Wilkins. A wide four bombs. But it wasn't considered so by the Belgian referee, and it's a goal kick to Denmark. Barnes a little unlucky there, I would have thought, Brian. That looked uh, an obstruction to me. No, the referee's not made many mistakes. Well, more than Olsen now. Shilton. Neil. Lee. Mariner trying to get away from Bush, but if you say the referee is not making many mistakes, it's also true that the Danes aren't making many mistakes at the moment. They're playing remarkably confidently, obviously, with a one-goal lead. The, to be fair, they started it from the kickoff, and they've not dropped this confidence that somebody's put into them, whether it be their manager or the fact that they think they're better than us. Spencer. Wilkins. Often. Again towards Mariner. But again, Busk is there, but this time Sammy Lee's got in behind him. And Sammy's run, in fact, has forced the Dane to concede the corner. England's first of the game. will take it. Osman is forward. Butchers at the near post looking possibly for that flick. Good actual taker of corners, Barnes, but that occasion not easily cleared by the Danish defence. England throw. And Sammy Lee getting Barnes on his way again with a poor cross and a goal kick. If anything tells a story, that does. The fact that we've got our first corner minutes after half-time. Low, mate. And we're at home. So, Kerr with the goal kick for Denmark, leading by a goal to nil, with nearly eight minutes of the second half gone in this crucial European Championship game at Wembley. Siemensen. And now Rasmussen. Bertelsen, Sanson, Mariner, to Barnes, it's a bit better. but not quite good enough, the Danes were swarming around him, and England got a throw. Francis made a great run across the goal mark, hoping to receive Sanson's throw, and in fact has got a bit of space now. Sanson's ignored him and played it towards Butcher. And Gregory was trying to get in there also. Wilkins with the shot, just wide. Brian? I don't care what happened with this throw in at all, whether we could have scored or not. Francis should have had that ball. Well, he suddenly found some space for himself, didn't he? And... Uh... Wilkins. It yard. was a fair effort from Wilkins, but Francis should have had that ball. The, the fullback was obsessed with the long throw. Barnes. Just the first little glimmer that England might be moving a little more freely. Lee getting the ball back to Neil and risking a terrible injury as he did so. Mariner's trying to get there, but Bush getting it away. And we've got them pinned back for a moment. Lee with the throw, but England still a goal down. Barnes, now, can he shimmy his way? And he has. He's got a cross in towards Butcher. And Francis is there. Butcher stayed there. Now, can Francis find a yard? There's that cross once more. Gregory up for it. 
Butcher trying to get it back in there again, ducking his head into it. Sanson ducking his uh, head and his foot into it almost, and in the end conceding the free kick to Denmark. Somewhat is obviously moved Barnes, who's been playing orthodox outside left for about 50 odd minutes and suddenly somebody says to him get out of it because we're not quite happy with you and he's had a you know a burst of energy you know Bertelsen playing the ball through and Butcher getting it away to Kenny Sanson Play forward towards Mariner who's got Wilkins running alongside him but he couldn't get that little flick header in for him Gregory there too Morton Olsen for Denmark Ten minutes into the second half. Danes leading by a goal to nil. Busk, Siemensen, Busk. Busk again. Siemensen, delicate little touch there and an accurate one. Elke are playing it back and they get a corner. Off Terry Butcher. Danes are bringing a few in now. Lebu, Elkers there, Bertelsen just outside the box, Siemensen's in there too. Yes, for Olsen. They take the corner. Plenty of English defenders there. In fact, three went up for that one to get it away. Lebu's had a fairly quiet game. Onto that left foot of his again, though, carving that cross out. And Siemensen couldn't bring it down quickly enough to get in the shot, and here's Sammy Lee for England. Played again for Wilkins. Lee. Mariner through the middle, and... Osman behind him. I think most of the fans wanted it played forward. Well, that's where it is now, with Wilkins again. Barnes going off in chase, and an England throw off Rasmussen. It's a game we mustn't lose, England. But we're a goal down. There's the cross coming in. Oh, and the keeper. Well, that says a lot about him. I think we suspected that he might be the weak link, and he flapped at that one and completely missed it. So maybe a few more crosses should be coming in. At the moment, there's some defending to be done as Morton Olsen comes forward now for Denmark. Made wide to Elker on the far side. Stopped by Neil at the expense of a corner. What about the keeper? I, I couldn't tell you what he was trying to do there. And the Danes in no hurry to take the corner. Nobody's going across to take it. And now Siemensen almost reluctantly does so, and I hope the Belgian referee will take a little note. So, Alan Siemensen with the corner for Denmark. Jesper Olsen going towards him. El Kerr's in there, Lerbu's in there, Bergren's in there. And it's Bergren, in fact, the ball coming through to him. And Wilkins with a chance, he changed his mind. Oh, my goodness. And now it opens up a little bit on the left-hand side. It's Russell Osman, of all people, right up here. With Sanson going outside in Wilkins. That's too far for Francis. Bertelsen. Yeah. And Siemensen. The Danes here enjoyed that, but Sanson put a stop to it. Good job. Swept wide for Lee. Goodness, he's covering every square inch of this ground at the moment, Sammy Lee. Barnes. He's really got more to offer than he's shown tonight as Barnes, and that was a fairly true challenge by Gregory, conceding another free kick.
certainly taking their time over free kicks and corners. Nielsen, Lairview, to Nielsen again. Lairview. And finding their way through this time, Lairview playing it wide for Siemensen with a half an hour remaining. Bertelsen. Eight or nine passes without an England player getting near it. And Nielsen putting it back to his keeper. There's no sign of movement whatsoever on the England substitutes bench. Lookins challenging and winning. Gregory, a little touch there for Sanson. A nice little touch there for Wilkins. Played on again, but only a red shirt is there. Finding Bergman, finding Battleson, finding Morton Olsen. Danish fans enjoy that as well. And at the moment you have to say there's more for them to cheer than for the English people here at uh, Wembley today. Bergman's down, clutching a leg at the moment. He's now got himself up again as Barnes seeks to make progress. He's stopped by Rasmussen who's followed him to that side of the field and it's a throw to England. Lee with the throw. Francis. Good skill. In a very combined, confined space. And Elke getting it through eventually to Morton Olsen. And he'll put it back to his keeper. At the moment, they look as though they might take a bit of upsetting now. A goal up the Danes and playing with an assurance that comes from that sort of lead and knowing that they're playing pretty well within themselves against an England side that just can't seem to do the work that matters in the Danish penalty area. No offside flag, but Shilton is out. Nielsen shouldering him off the ball, but unfairly according to the referee, and it's a free kick to England. Now Gregor is in there, and Butcher's gone up. Barnes is coming across to take it with Wilkins. Francis in there too. And Samson, Lee are all there or thereabouts. Barnes and Wilkins to decide who's going to take it. It's Wilkins curling it in. Very well. Samson again with that long throw, looking this time for Mariner. Touchdown by him, but the Danes get it away once more. Neil going in. Suddenly they're all coming out. And Elke. And suddenly Siemensen's through there too. And in the end, it's played back by Russell Osman when Siemensen had made something like a 50-yard burst from the back. And that ball only had to bounce kindly for him, and the Danes could well have been two up. Now Mariner, still 1-0 to Denmark. John Barnes for England. Running into trouble. Just look at the Danes there. Two are in close attendance, one just behind him. Leaves a little bit of space in the middle now. Lee. Mariner. They claim that he was put unfairly to the ground, but the referee said it's a goal kick to Denmark. And it must be going through Bobby Robson's mind now, Brian, about a substitution with Mabbott and Blissett. He's got to be thinking of uh, Mariner off and John Gregory. And maybe Mabbott and Blissett on? A possibility of those two, yes. But it's Sanson at the moment for England. 
We have 25 minutes now to repair the damage caused by Siemensen's penalty in the first half, with Denmark leading 1-0. on the right foot, which isn't his best. And that time, a rather clumsy right foot clearance by Bertelsen provides England with the corner. Wilkins will take it. Mariner once more in there. Gregory, Osmond's come forward too. Butcher's at the near post. Wilkins with the kick. Mariner flicking it on! Francis almost got a touch that could have been so important. Denmark's throw. Well, it was a corner floated in there. I think it was Gregory who got the touch and back flicked it, but Francis couldn't quite get in. Time the Danes were on the, way, the wrong wavelength. Horton Olsen tried to find Siemensen, but found touch instead. Butcher. And now Wilkins. Mariner. Neil. Butcher. Well, that's no use for England. Back of the go to the keeper again. The Danish voices are the voices we hear at the moment, Brian. And rightly so as well. They're playing as though they've got two more men more than us. Hansen with a throw. Francis turning and fouled again by Nielsen. Another free kick to England. Still no sign of activity from the substitutes bench. Sanson again with a free kick. Butcher trying to get the header in. Backed into a one most of those headers against the Danes, but he's won very few of them in fairness this evening. Osman getting that one away. It's Busk getting it forward to Siemensen. El Kerr was there too. Phil Neal covering for England. And Bobby Robson down on the bench now. And a very anxious England manager. It looked like uh, Mark Chamberlain warming up. So Mark Chamberlain's already started to warm up on the far side. A winger from Stoke City, and maybe the need to get down the byline, to the byline, and get a few crosses in for the likes of Paul Mariner. Butcher underneath it, guided back to Shilton. And it's clearly going to be John Barnes who comes off. So, Mark Chamberlain, who played against Luxembourg here. 
gets another chance now to put things right with about 20 minutes left Sansom Francis turned nicely there Mariner trying to get in Gregory was in there too the Danes had a little bit of trouble getting that away Barnes covers it into touch in fact he's holding the back of his right leg as though he's also had a slight injury he's got a hamstring well that's bad news for England it'll be bad news for Watford as well and he's going off and Chamberlain comes off He's in the mood, he's a dynamic winner, is Chamberlain. Sanson with a long throw there towards Mariner. Francis in there too with a backward header, but Morton Olsen getting it away. Mariner trying to force something into that Danish penalty area, and again a free kick's given. Siemenson. Eglin's away on the right, stopped there by Sansa. Now maybe a chance for a quick counter break by England. The Danes caught just for a moment off balance there. Francis very busy, Chamberlain very busy in there too, but the keeper handling it safely on that occasion. Taken Francis, a nice little dummy which got Siemenson out of the way. That surely is a free kick, also, but no whistle. And in the end, the goal kick. Chamberlain's never had a kick, poor lad. And since coming on, I feel a wee bit sorry for him because I'm not sure if we're good enough to get the ball to him. Like all orthodox wingers, there you are, their defender gave it to him. Like all orthodox wingers, uh, he needs service. I just hope he gets a kick. He works down the road from where I am, and he's got an immense amount of talent. Well, let's see if he could use it now with the service to good effect, but well, that's not the sort of service he wants. The pass from John Gregory caught him on the wrong foot. It's Denmark's throw. They've stolen about 15 yards, but the referee, although he's a generous man, won't allow that. And he's also pointing out to the Danes, incidentally, that if that was a little bit of gamesmanship to waste a bit of time so the throw can be taken again, it hasn't escaped his Belgian eyes. Well, there's space here for Nielsen. He knows that they are maybe just 16 or 17 minutes away from a really important and a famous victory here for Denmark. That's a good ball by Neil. Clearance. Osman again didn't hit the front men. Cut out by Sanson. It's Gregory. Wilkins. Gets the ball through for Lee. Neil is up there joining him, but couldn't gather. And the Danes got it away. And Osman turning it in. 
for Ray Wilkins. Now, can England get this equaliser with a quarter of an hour left? Francis turning and keeping possession. Mariner playing it back again to Francis. Mariner once more, but all the danger. Neil getting it in there. And here come Denmark through Bertelsen. With Jesper Olsen here. Butcher doing the shadowing, and England are getting men back. L cares up quickly, wanting the ball into the England box. Play back for Siemensen, who's a real playmaker in this Danish side. This is happening, Luther Blissett's warming up. Solon Mergu. Bergreen. And Rusk. Keeping possession, we've got to get the ball off them. And the unsympathetic crowd already started to chant what a load of rubbish. That certainly isn't going to encourage England in this particular predicament. from the very first moment in that dramatic opening when Laudrup hit the side netting when it looked easier to score the Danes have looked a better side together they've looked poised and they've looked confident and they've looked talented and they seem to have two more yards than us two more seconds to play the ball in and two more extra men and that's frightening Sanson. Butcher heading it straight to Bergren. He's got Elkair right up alongside him. A substitute who came on and Elkair couldn't quite keep it in. The ball is out, it's a goal kick. Seemed to have a serious foot injury yesterday during training and they thought he wouldn't play, but he's here. And also warming up on the substitutes bench now is Luther Blissett. Francis. Two substitutes allowed, of course. And once that's done, Bobby Robson will have played his last hand. Mariner. Unable to cope with that attack. And it's number four, Sammy Lee, going off. So what do you make of that, Brian? They're taking Sammy off from the midfield and bringing Luther on to play where, do you think? Well, I'm not sure where he's going to play, but Trevor Francis played that ball from a left-back position 10 yards inside his own half. So I'm not quite sure of the formation at the moment. You're saying you'd like Francis much further forward, and, and Blissett, in fact, has gone to have a word with Francis. Plans from the bench are being transferred to the field. And let's hope that in the 12 minutes that remain, they come to fruition. I wouldn't have Trevor Francis in the dressing room unless he was going to get me a goal. You can't score a goal from inside your own half. Oh, now Blissett. Scored, playing for his club AC Milan on Sunday. Let's see if he can do it for England tonight. It's a free kick for England. Sanson will take it. They've brought Butcher forward as well. Played in towards the near post and Luther Blissett, but there's always going to be a difficult one for somebody coming on straight away. And it uh, provides the Danes with another goal kick. And a few more seconds go drifting away into the cold night sky. And a fairly bleak evening it's been so far for England. A goal down. About 11 minutes remaining. Neil up there. Sanson. Butcher. Is it? Will he get the better of Lerbu? No, Lerbu it fell onto his left foot and he's found Siemenson with it. Good challenge by Butcher. Well, not far away. As the ball was floating there, I was going to say, well, that's really optimistic from that range. 
but for a moment it looked as though Kerr might have been caught a little bit out of his goal. Won the challenge, didn't really quite know what to do with it, I think, and in the end decided to have a blind forward. And it's a goal kick. Well, Siemensen, meantime, is injured. We have ten minutes left. Siemenson gingerly to his feet, the man whose penalty goal separates the sides tonight. And of course, if England are beaten here tonight, it's pretty devastating so far as qualification for the European Championships concerned. It would then mean that we would want to win our two away matches that are remaining in Hungary and in Luxembourg and hope that in one of their games the Danes come unstuck either in Hungary or Greece. It's unlikely that they'll come unstuck at home against Luxembourg because this will put them a point ahead of England if they win this game, remember, with a game in hand. Morten Olsen with the free kick. throw to England Francis just kept in by Trevor Francis now that was for me trying to do there late stage Brian and it's looking pretty really desperate now with just seven minutes left and frustration is the correct word as well we've got a goalkeeper standing there who's not even dirtied his gloves and we won nil down but what is also important is that we've hardly dirtied the gloves of the Danish goalkeeper here's Elke did you mean our, our goalkeeper's not uh, I mean our goalkeeper yes. he's not even dirtied his gloves and we won nil down that's right Free kick. Oh, and Sanson getting involved with El Care. There's no need for that. But that maybe is Kenny Sanson's frustration showing in that way. In the way maybe you're showing your frustration at home. To be fair, it's a night when England have not played well. And nothing much has gone right for them. Olsen getting past Sanson. And then hitting one at Shilton. That didn't really dirty his gloves. That's meat and drink to Peter Shilton. Morton Nelson challenged by the Mariner. And unfairly challenged by Mariner. And I must say, nothing much has gone England's way from the referee's point of view either. Another free kick to Denmark. And it looks as though Bethelsen will play it back to his keeper care. A little over five minutes. Neil to 
to Osman. Forward again towards Blissett. Touched on. Mark Chamberlain's going to pick that ball up now, Brian, and uh, that's about all he's done so far since he's come on. Well, I feel a wee bit sorry for him, obviously. I've overestimated our midfield. Francis. Now Chamberlain. No. Thank you, says Stevenson. And away he goes. He's got Elkair. He's got little Bertelsen, who's making a tremendous run. And Soren Lerbe. And if you get it onto his left foot, we could be in more trouble. Well, we won't, but they get a call. The referee is taking a note of how long they are taking to take these corners and uh, free kicks. And they're making a substitution. Olsen is coming off. It's Moldu who's coming on. Harley was doubtful before the start, but he's done a tremendous job at the back. There's no two ways about that. And the number 13, Jan Moldu, from Ajax of Amsterdam. The central defender is on in his place. Siemensen. England's goal kick. Well inside the last five minutes now. About three and a half to go in point of fact. And the Danes, who've never beaten England, they've only played here once. And that was in 1979 when they lost by a goal to nil here at Kevin Keegan goal. Now, can England save that reputation even at this late stage? Francis is diving in, but the whistle had gone in any case. It's a free kick for England. Goalkeeper reluctant to release the ball, but now it's gone back, and the Danes are using every trick outside the book to delay things. Now, can England, who've shown very little from their set pieces tonight, can they do something with this? All diving in towards the far post. Chamberlain trying to get it back. Wilkins was in there too. Chamberlain might be content to let that go for the corner, which it's done. So, England's corner. About a minute and a half remaining of the game. Little more than that. Plus, a bit of time to be added on for time-wasting, I imagine. And we're desperate for a goal now. And the referee wanting to have a word with Mariner and with Busk, who are having a little bit of a barging match there as they waited for this corner to come in. and seem to be shoved off that ball. And yes, but also with a little bit of acrobatics gets it away for Denmark. Samson tangling with Elker and the throw going to Denmark. They'll just be keen now to keep it in this half of the field. Inside the last minute of the game. With time to be added on, you can be sure of that. And Denmark leading by a goal to nil, Siemensen's penalty in the first half. And Lerbu is getting a yellow card. Did you see what that was for, Brian? It was for wasting time with the throw-in. Well... That would indicate maybe that the referee is going to give England a slight chance by adding on quite a generous amount of time because the Danes really have been very lethargic about taking all their corners and free kicks in the second half and the throws as well. I wouldn't bet on the crowd giving the ball back or they've thrown it back. I thought they might keep it because we've not had it all night. Well, let's see in the last few seconds if we can make it count. Butcher, a long ball forward. Doesn't come through to Chamberlain. And the Danes get it away into touch once more. Anywhere is good enough for them now, as long as it's away outside their own penalty area. And 
England, who've looked devoid of attacking ideas for so long, desperately seeking something in these last seconds, but now have to hold off the Danes again. As Jesper Olsen tries to get Bergren through. Goal kick. The Danes thought it was a corner. I'm bound to say I thought it was too. But the linesman had no doubts, and England get a goal kick, and Shilton wants to take it quickly. Goodness knows there's little time left. We're into time added on, and the Danes are poised to win their first ever match against England at the ninth attempt. And the cries of Denmark are all around Wembley at the moment. Can Blissett silence them? Well, he's gone past Rasmussen. The little cross coming in there. Francis desperate to try and get on the end of it, and the ball goes off the full back and into touch. Good cross by Blissett. Brave attempt by Francis, but not good enough. Sanson now with a long throw. Butcher there, miss it there. And miss it! Oh, brilliant save by the keeper. An absolute match-winning save there by Oli Kerr in the Danish goal. We thought he was the weakness in the last moments. He's proved to be the strength, and Denmark have won it. A blow for England. Simonson's penalty in the first half gives Denmark their first ever victory over England. And that save by Kerr in the last seconds of the game, denying England a point. As you've heard, England leading 2-0 and dominated the first half without ever looking really totally convincing. You would expect them to beat Luxembourg, it's true. England now kicking off in the second half in white, attacking the goal to our left. The Luxembourgers, let me remind you, haven't won a major game since 1973. They've lost 38 out of the last 39 games they've played. They really are the chopping blocks of Europe. Alan Devonshire who's had a really sprightly game down the left flank for England. In fact, the goal's four. Uh, in terms of Luxembourg during that time, 22 goals against 133. So England are adding to that torture so far tonight with those goals by Brian Robson and Paul Mariner. But of course it is a difficult job for England, there's no doubt about it, with that bad news coming out of Athens. I think Bobby Robson put his finger on it when he said it's rather like asking soldiers to go on firing bullets after a peace treaty has been signed. Well, here are Luxembourg in their red shirts. Hellers, only 19, and one of their bright young players, plays for Standard Liège in the Belgian First Division. Now Devonshire, Robson. Tony Woodcock has gone off injured after 25 minutes with a bit of a groin injury. And uh, that'll be bad news for Arsenal fans, I'm sure. Bad news for England, except it's good news for John Barnes. He's come on as a substitute. Devonshire with a good run. Robson trying to get in late on that uh, England move. But the Luxembourg team again get it away only as far as new cap Mike Duxbury now Sammy Lee who's had a really good uh, first half on the right flank of England's midfield Hoddle but again it's Luxembourg through Wagner and a throw to England well, that's Louis Pilo, the Luxembourg coach who used to be a defender with Standard Liège. Devonshire. Of course, England very strongly represented in the crowd here tonight as well. Tony Wilcock, who's gone off, of course, as I said, with that groin injury. Luther Blissett, I noticed, just alongside him. Scored a hat-trick when England won 9-0 here at uh, Wembley, rather, 11 months ago. In fact, the Luxembourg side saying they were still a little shell-shocked from that. And if England got an early break, then they could be onto the same sort of hammering. Well, it's two so far, and England again pressing forward. Sammy Lee. Too far for Barnes, and quite easy for Jean-Paul Defrand, the very small goalkeeper. He can only be about five foot seven, five foot eight, a lorry driver, and a great Manchester United fan, the Luxembourg goalkeeper. So much so that when he was a substitute at Wembley, 
He went straight to the England bench and swapped shirts with Gary Bailey. Who, of course, is the England substitute goalkeeper tonight. This is Misho, the right back for Luxembourg. Langers, oh, a terrible miss kick there. And hard for Louis Pilo, the Luxembourg coach, really to motivate a side when they get beaten so often. Not an awful lot to work on, Brian, has he, Brian Clough? No, uh, I feel a little bit of sympathy for both managers at the moment. John Barnes. Robson. And Misho getting it back. Sanson had gone right in there, barged off the ball, but the Dutch referee looked away when England looked hopefully towards him. Now Devonshire. With eight amateurs in the side, I suppose it's expected maybe that Luxembourg will wilt a little bit as the game goes on. Played in by Duxbury again to Devonshire. Weaving all sorts of patterns there. Duxbury with a long, long cross. Mariners coming in on it. But again, the keeper handled well. Good play by Sanson. And good combination with Robson. And now Hovel coming up from the back. Played it for Lee. Hitting it first time. And a good save by the keeper. What a good one. Well, Sammy Lee, who uh, scored a scorching goal against Hungary, has yet to score for Liverpool this season. And a really good shot, and a corner then for England, which Glenn Hover will take. Union Jacks all around the ground today. Leeds United and Huddersfield represented there. Mariner turning it back. Devonshire trying to get it in. And it'll come again for Hover, and he's onside. Crossed in, Barnes with a header, Butcher Shorty, and number three for England. And a fairly simple final task there for Terry Butcher, Brian Club. The Luxembourg players thought it was offside, and at this present time they're protesting to the lines and something cruel. Now, I didn't think Hoddle was offside. I did think Barnes went to score. I'm sure he did. So 3-0 then for England. And I know you've got a theory that even bad sides have to be beaten. All sides have to be beaten and all goals have to be scored. And uh, their attitude of the England players, second half, has been absolutely brilliant. The 2-0 the, the up at half-time, they've come out here and it appears they're saying to themselves, well, we're going to stick another few in as well. And that goal was a smashing start for them. So, Butcher... And a pass in a lot of space for Duxbury. And of course, to some degree, it will be a compensation for England. The bad news from Athens, if you've just come in and are watching us live, that with Denmark having won there, England are out of the European Championship, will not qualify for the finals in France next year. So, in terms of that competition, this match doesn't mean an awful lot. But in terms of doing a good job tonight for the sake of the game and indeed looking further ahead towards World Cup qualification it could mean quite a lot it's a night really to be starting to look Brian Clough isn't it for players who are going to serve England over the next five years or so really well for the next several matches Bobby Robson will have to uh, blueprint his side uh, for the next four or five years, that's an absolute certainty. And he'll probably, probably be doing what the West Germans have been doing. Devonshire. Mariner's header, Butcher almost getting in again. But that time uh, there was an infringement offside and it'll be a free kick for Luxembourg. We're just saying what the West Germans did when they had a bad World Cup. They just scrapped everything and started right from the, right from the bottom and they didn't mind how many matches they lost, but they got it right eventually. A little touch there by Reiter, but Mangers playing the ball forward again. 
without a great deal of control. Devonshire. Mariner. Sanson. Butcher. And Barnes in there, but the keeper first. The Bronx clearance, Wright are jumping, but out jumps by Duxbury, supported by Martin. Hoddle with a touch for Robson. Butcher. And now Devonshire. <laughs> Colors getting in. Langers. Writer to Langers. Plays in the French First Division, the number 11. But that wasn't a First Division pass by any means. Falls for Butcher. And now the ball coming off Mernier, the Luxembourg defender. England's throw. Sanson finding Hobble, Mernier, but offside against Barnes, and a free kick to Luxembourg. Yes, well, we would expect them to win here, and indeed you would expect England to win, and they'd be disappointed not to, but it's worth pointing out that the Danes came here and won only by two goals to one, and then on the strength of a very dubious penalty. So there are nights when the Luxembourg side can put it together a little bit. Duxbury for England. Now Lee. And an offside, quite clearly so, John Barnes. And Bobby Robson watching his side quite comfortably placed while Luxembourg warm up Gires, who's a young defender. Boney losing out as Robson comes in quickly with the challenge. Hobble playing it in again for Robson. Number four, well taken. And Brian Robson's second goal of the night. But a very good goal indeed, Brian. Absolutely brilliant goal. His close control here would have beaten any defence. And he still had to look up and put it in the side netting. His attitude all night has been brilliant. And he got us on the way with the goal and he took it well. In the meantime, the substitution is about to be made with uh, Malje coming off and Gires coming on. So it's four for England and Luxembourg kick off again. With coming up to 12 minutes of the second half gone. Sanson. Robson. Duxbury. Could be that Luxembourg legs are beginning to go. And certainly England have put them under a lot of pressure almost from the word go. Huddle. In for Barnes. Here coming it again. And uh, that time Luxembourg got to grips with the task. Mernier. Got out again by Robson, but a throw. And Gires will take it. No, it's uh, Michaud who takes it, finds Hellers. <laughs> 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 
Duxbury. And in fairness, the uh, Luxembourg side have hardly been in the England half. Hobble now. Left foot shots. Good save by the keeper. And indeed, his opposite number, Ray Clements, has had only one shot to save all night. And that was a very good tip over quite early in the game when England were only 1-0 up. Barnes. Duress. Callas. Duress again onside. More work for Clements here. Chance missed there by Barboni. Ah! Oh, that was a glorious opportunity there for Luxembourg. It was Reiter who went right in. And Mariner now who will seek to do something the other end. But the ball played a little too firmly forward. But for once, England caught not concentrating in defence, Brian Clough. That was as good a chance as we've seen all night. I can't quite believe what he tried to do. I think he lost it right at the last second and he caught it between his legs. Well, here's Devonshire. Go kick. It was possibly the excitement of them getting in our penalty area or let alone in the penalty area in the six-yard area because they've barely been over the halfway line. Little chip in there, Hobble. Robson again coming up from the back. Butcher. On the far side is Mariner leaping for this one. Hobble may hope to get in there too. And now it's Wagner. Following up well. Langers. Well, Duxbury doing his work there for England and it'll be a throw for Luxembourg Right a stop by Butcher Hoddle with the long ball forward Mariner off in chase and looks as though he might well have the legs of Mernier who seemed to be struggling a bit played into the path of Hoddle but I don't think he'll quite get there no but Barboni oh Lee wasn't concentrating as well then he didn't realize that the Luxembourg player was coming up behind him and wanted far too much time Barboni Wagner Hellas Mernier Michaud kick given England's way and it's with Hobble Mariner again has made a lot of space over on the right and Reiter in trouble at the moment for Luxembourg Bernier Robson Duxbury inviting Duxbury to continue forwards and the ball had just gone over although the Luxembourg fans didn't agree for the corner to England the Luxembourg uh, side are not happy with that linesman particularly over the third goal and he's getting a bit of stick now from all the Luxembourg players but he appears to have been given really fair, genuine decisions. But here's the corner for England. Hoddle with it. Robson! And turned away by Wagner. And in fact, the whistle had gone for an infringement there inside the Luxembourg penalty area. It'll be a free kick to the home team. England leading, if you've just come in, by four goals to nil with about 17 and a half minutes gone of the second half. Robson, two. Mariner and Butcher are England scorers. Butcher. 
Lee. Martin. Oh, 